The preservation of the developmental biology film series was made possible by generous contributions from Distinguished University Professor of Geosciences, Lynn Margulis Terence Malick Chelsea Green Publishing The Politics and Practice of Sustainable Living The Hardy Lane Foundation the International Symbiosis Society. Geobook Studio, publisher of The Biggest Picture. Hummingbird Films, producer of the documentary Symbiotic Earth. And supporters of the Lynn Margulis Archive at ScholarWorks. The protozoan Echinospherium nucleophilum is a model system for the investigation of microtubules. This is a multinucleate organism, measuring about 100 microns in diameter. Usually, there is a single contractile vacuole. A large number of slender, rigid but elastic structures, called axopodia, project from the spherical body. Particles move in both directions along the length of the axopod. Some of these particles are adhesive and assist in the trapping of prey. The Echinospherium feeds on other protozoa or on rotifers. Upon contact with a prey organism, the axopodia stick to it. They lose their rigidity and shorten. Many of the axopodia combine their cytoplasm to form a capsule surrounding the prey, even while it is still alive. As the food vacuole is slowly dragged into the cell body, the prey is gradually subdued. Once incorporated in the cell body, the contents of the vacuole are digested. Fission of Echinospherium frequently occurs after feeding. A constriction appears in the cell body, dividing it into two roughly equal parts, each with a complement of nuclei. In about 20 minutes to half an hour, the process is complete. The behavior of axopodia in feeding can be explained by examination of their substructure. If echinospherium is examined with polarized light, a birefringent core, called the axoneme, can be seen within each axopod, extending from its tip to the central portion of the cell body. This indicates that there may be a substratum of longitudinally oriented elements present in the axoneme. In electron micrographs, these elements turn out to be microtubules. Here they are shown in longitudinal section. In transverse sections, the microtubules are seen to be arranged into two interlocking spirals. Here they are seen near the tip of an axopod, and here near the base. 
The shortening of axopodia during feeding is caused by a breakdown of microtubules. Retraction and extension of axopodia can be studied by treating the organism with agents such as colchicine, which cause breakdown of microtubules. Low temperature has a similar effect. At 4 degrees centigrade, there is a net movement of the cytoplasmic parts of the exopodia towards the cell body, and the exopodia gradually retract. Retraction is complete in about 25 minutes. When the temperature is raised, the axopodia extend once again. If this experiment is repeated in polarized light, the birefringent axonemes disappear as retraction of the axopodia proceeds. An electron micrograph of the base of a retracting axopod shows that the microtubules have vanished. When the temperature is raised once more, the birefringent axonemes form first in the cell body. After this, axopodia begin to build up on their tips. A section through a regrowing axopod shows that the return of birefringence is due to the reassembly of microtubules. Much of the developing pattern in an axoneme is due to two kinds of bridges connecting adjacent microtubules. These bridges form between microtubules, building a stable structure as the axopodia extend. Some of these bridges are seen in an electron micrograph. Thus growth of axopodia appears to be dependent upon the assembly of microtubules and their interconnections. The presence of microtubules seems also to influence particle movements in the assembled axopodia. Here the movement is speeded up three times. The particles jump, moving as individuals, not as a fluid mass. This type of motion, where there is no generalized flow of cytoplasm, is called saltation. The particles are confined to tracks along which they can move in either direction at velocities up to 1.5 microns per second. These tracks appear to be defined by microtubules, but what causes the movement is unknown. The microtubule is recognized to be a common constituent of plant and animal cells. Microtubules occur in cilia and flagella, and they provide the framework which enables these structures to move. An electron micrograph shows that the microtubules are arranged in the so-called 9 plus 2 pattern. Microtubules are also associated with the differentiation of developing neurons. With the kinospherium, we have shown how the assembly and breakdown of microtubules can confer shape to a cell and influence its motility.